Another week of good anime episodes have passed. I gave about, well, nearly all the animes being reviewed uh, as of late, well, they got the two thumbs up from me. Plus, let's just see, it's the eighth anime, right? If you want to skip to the eighth anime, well, timestamp in the description below, all right? Otherwise, grab a drink and keep on watching. So, mga ka lifestyle, welcome to another episode Reviews Digest. To Aro Kagako no Real Gun Season 3, Episode 19. Now, um, it sort of picked up where it left off. <laughs> Okay, but instead of um, instead of using opais as the the focal point of the humor, it used makarel. Nagawa yun dahil sa makarel. Satin was Satin was uh, shopping for groceries. She bought the last two cans of mackerel in the in the grocery store. Then Frenda, one of the um, one of the members of the one of the members of the group in question, we saw in episode 18. She was actually addicted to mackerel. Okay, she's a foreigner. Uh, I think she's I think she, uh, she's European. I don't know what can what country has uh, mackerel as its primary de delicacy. Uh, I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar with that. But anyway. She is addicted to mackerel and she literally begs Satin to give her both cans. You wish. Ikaw ni Satin. You wish. So, as Satin actually gave, gave uh, one of the cans, but Frenda, due to her addiction, tried to cook the mackerel from within the can. So, ginamit niya yung ability niya, which is Pyro, 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 pyro technique. Ala jubili nga eh. Ala jubili yung ability niya. Nasunog. <laughs> so, sinabi ni sa atin, come, to the, ka, come over to my place for dinner para matikbo mo yung makarel. Okay, umuo. So, there, tigas gano mo ka ni, ni friende. Humingi pa ng ano eh. Yeah, nag, nag kinritik pa yung yung luto ni Satin eh, doon sa makakaril eh. Tingkas na mukha eh. Isa na nga tong, you're the guest and you're going to, and you're going to question the um, you're going to question the homeowner's cooking. <laughs> My god. I, I I was actually waiting for Satin to Satin to kick her out of her apartment. I was waiting for that moment but didn't happen. Uh, Satin the um, Satin the uh, the nice girl that she is. So send uh, send send a uh, friend off her merry way. Yeah, she was so sad. In the end, well, friend was satisfied with satin school cooking. Ang dami nga niya kinain. <laughs> Ang dami nga niya kinain. So the next day they were texting. Then Satin was on her way home. All of a sudden, dinukot siya. She got kidnapped by uh, a group of men who were um call this were acting on orders of someone. Okay. <clears throat> there was another Esper. Uh, I think this is from another group who actually can control. Um, who actually has seven servers tied to his head through a uh, through a visor like that. Set server na abit dun. He was actually controlling it. He must be the one giving orders. So dinuko si Satin, but but. Tough luck for the tough luck for tough luck for her captors. Frenda saw it all. Sumun si Frenda to in, in, a, in an attempt to rescue her. She was able to rescue her. She boxed uh, her captors in on a, on a stretch of on a stretch of street using her abilities. Na, nagpasabog ng dalawa. Pok sa harap isa sa likod. So they're boxed in. No way out. No way out and one way in for Frenda. So she was able to to save Satin, and of course Satin was grateful. 
But in the process, she kills all of her captors. <laughs> Friend that kills all of Satan's captors. Wala mo nang walang binuhay. Papatay. Wow. <laughs> wow. Now, natulugan ng ng grupo ng ng Esper na yun, lalaki, lalaking Esper. Natulugan si he sends she sent, she, he sends their top assassin naman to 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 capture to catch Satan and well practically she can do what she, she can do whatever she wants with Frenda <clears throat> her name is Rumi her name is Rumika okay her name is uh, Yurika pala her name is Yurika maamo muka but when she when she got the orders to to take out when she gets the orders to take out someone that assassin's look comes out of her comes out of her face comes out of that hell of hers wow talagang masaya mo mamamatay tao to she was able to track them down using the blood using her comrades' blood stains on Frenda pero you wouldn't see any you wouldn't see any of those blood stains on Frenda pero yung essence nandun it's on her it's on her sleeve on her skirt it's even on her shoes so yun ang ginamit yun ang ginamit na ng ability ng assassin na to. She finally, she finally, she finally sees them, targets Frenda with her, with another ability of his, another ability of hers. Puta! Puta kayo na loko pala to! Kalaban na! Parang bow and arrow, parang itatanga ka man. Gumawa ganun eh. Yung archer stance. Tapos biglang bumitaw na ganun. Natamaan si friend. <laughs> Wala namang... Wow. Okay? Wow. That, that's how the episode ended. So, in the teaser... Well, I don't have to give you the teaser. You, I think you... I'm, I'm assuming that you already saw that. So, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give you the teaser. But... Anyway, that's how the episode ended, and it was actually Satan's turn to have a um, call this a, a side adventure. Okay. We saw, we already saw um, Shirai, Shirai's own. Uh, we already saw a oh my God, side adventure from Shirai, from Mikoto, and now it's Satan. So I think I gotta gotta probably I got a good projection that after episode 20 it will be Riharu's turn. I think it'll be Riharu's turn. Then after that, it's going to be um it's going to be it's gonna be the season finale. I hope it's uh I hope it's three episodes worth. Kasi ganito yun eh. ganito yung build up for for a long finale. Eh. Tomorrow, I'm going to no Real Gun Season 3, Episode 19. Thumbs up lang. I couldn't give it the two thumbs up again. I couldn't give this episode the two thumbs up because, what? Well, parang side, ano na side quest lang eh. The reason why I gave the previous episode the two thumbs up because I told you. It, I told you. For the first time, Tomorrow, I'm going to no Real Gun made me laugh my ass off with that episode. Okay? I was literally laughing my ass off with that episode. Through the entire episode, talaga natatawa ako. Okay? Talaga natatawa ako. So I gave it the two thumbs up. But this episode in the first, uh, I think the first half, talagang may, may funny moments siya. It's about Macarel, okay? Two girls with a, uh, with a weird, with a weird interest. Okay, one of them has a really weird interest in Macarel. Okay? And Satin, as well, it's just her. It's just her favorite food. Pero to see si friend that talaga addicted sa to makarel because uh, basically she misses her home country. Uh, now, if you know, uh, if you've seen the episode, and if you know what language Frenda is uh, using, comment below. Okay, I really want to know what what language is that and 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 what country she might be from. Kasi um, she, miss, she misses her country because of uh, Macarel, her love for Macarel. Okay. I have absolutely no idea 
where mackerel is the primary dish. Okay. What, on what country is that? So, comment below. I really love to know that. Alright? So, again, to araw ka ako ng Real Gun, Season 3, Episode 19, thumbs up. Alright? One thumb up. To be here, to be specific. Okay? I'm not gonna tell you the, the teaser for the next episode because I am, well, I'm assuming that you also saw that episode. So, let's wait for that. It's probably gonna, it's probably, uh, it'll probably be a slam bang one. Okay? Peter Grill in the Philosopher's Time, episode 6. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> Boy! <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Despite Peter's convincing, wala, convinced na si Piglet na kailangan makipag-sex sa kanya. Kailangan makipag-sex siya sa kanya. <laughs> you know why? Dahil nilagyan ng gayuma, Pinalagyan ng gayuma ang ng Guildmaster yung drinks ni Piglet nun. The Guildmaster found a way to make Piglet be, be so horny for Peter, she couldn't resist. She had, um, I, she had his trusted aide put some aphrodisiac in her drink. Wow, okay. This is how devious the Guildmaster is. He showed to us again how much he fucking hates Peter. Okay? He really doesn't want Peter for a son-in-law. Right? So, no choice to Peter. Akipag sex! Okay? Consummated! Eh di tuwang-tuwa naman yung tuwang-tuwa naman si, si Master Babe, yung leader ng mga orcs. Grabe. <laughs> But Piglet made a request. Okay, to the to the astonishment of everyone in in that room, uh, see si Master Babe, the Guildmaster, even Peter. She wants to be Peter's uh, Peter's servant uh, for all time. She wants to join the Warriors Guild because of Peter, because she wants to be that close to him. And it's all right. Especially especially the Guildmaster. He can now use this against Peter, both Peter and Luvelia, para lang mapahiwalay sila. She, he can actually use this, okay? His, his mind is that dirty, okay? His brain is that dirty, okay? So, now, so while they were alone, Peter and Piglet, dun, that's when Piglet showed her. <laughs> <laughs> Dark side. <laughs> it actually scared Peter. Okay? She wants to She wants to what you call it? She wants to be the mother of Peter's kids. And she even said to Peter that her reproduction skills are at par with any with any with any other human. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so Peter thought, I think I created a monster. <laughs> Patay. Mukhang hali. Mama pala, mama pala itong nakilala kong babae. <laughs> Just ka. Oh my god. Okay. Peter's problems has, has, um, what you call this? has just grown astronomically <laughs> within this episode oh shit 
Oh my god. All right. Wow. Okay. So, we're done with the first half of this anime. So, I can't wait what the second half will now look like. Now, episode 7 has been teasered in uh, in the last few parts. It has been teasered. So, I think magkakasama na sila sa isang bahay. I don't know how they ended up in just ended up in just one house, but your truly wants to find out really bad. <laughs> Yours truly wants to find out really bad. So, Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time, two thumbs up. <laughs> <clears throat> Peter Grill, uh, the Peter Grill anime has just um, redeemed itself. All right, with this episode, like I, I said in the last review digest that Super Hexeros has is now um, what you call this has just one as one up Peter Grill in terms of in terms of the humor element. Nope. Peter Grill has just redeemed. Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time has just redeemed themselves with this episode. <laughs> oh my God! Technically, you don't you don't need to use an aphrodisiac to make to make Peter have sex. Actually, all you need are boobs. <laughs> oh <Opies>. my! <laughs> what you need is to to uh, throw him into an opai fest and boom, <laughs> there he goes again. <laughs> There he goes again. You ask me, it's not the aphrodisiac that did him in, but his love for opais. <laughs> his love for opais. Okay, that's what did him in, not the aphrodisiac. <laughs> nope, nowhere. The aphrodisiac is nowhere near it. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> so again, Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time. Two thumbs up. <laughs> I can't wait for the second half of this anime, okay? So guys, see you in episode 7! Aparirahan man, episode 7! Alright, this is a rather cool episode, okay? This, uh, well, everyone found out that Gil and his gang were responsible for the closing out the, um, the shutdown of, uh, what you call this? Um, yung dahanan papadon Dead Valley. Eh, na tulugan na sila nila nila apare. So Dylan decides to take matters into his own hands. Yun na nahuli niya yung mga magpapasabog ng magpapasabog ng ng ah uh, call this? Pasan ng dahanan? <laughs> Pasan ng dahanan? Natrap sila pero. Not gonna happen. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Na kalkula actually ni Ra, ni Apare yung pag uh, pag iwas siya sa mga naglu naguhulug ang bato. He was able to. You know, compute nanya. Oh, we got out. <laughs> They got out actually. So inga, but there was one catch. He well, Apare was able to make a hybrid engine. <laughs> Steve Chaka gasoline ang puta ragis. Hybrid engine na. Kinumbanya yung steam and yung original steam engine ng ng kotse nila with Al's gasoline engine. So pinag pinagsama niya lalo bumili sa takbo. But but it the gasoline part, the gasoline engine got shot. So kumbaga nasaid No, they, when they were trying to escape the, when, when they were trying to escape, so siempre, uh, nagasting nagasting gasolina na, so called this na stress out, na stress out yung gasoline engine, so it got busted. Uh, apare was apare wasn't able to fix it. So then Jalian and Al, uh, they offered their help. So yun nga na to. They were able to tow Team Apare's car to a safe place. So they were able to. So nagano sila. Uh, it's a long. So, so they figured. They both figured it's a long race. So bak bak tayo magmamadali. Nagets nila ang strategy ni Apare. It is a long race. So bak mo sa irin yung bak mo sa irin yung engine ng kochi mo, ba? Yeah, they got a point. It's a long race. The Trans America race is the um, the anime version of Le Mans. 
Parang ganun. You, you always think of that if you know Le Mans, it's the ultimate endurance race for cars. Okay, 24 24 hours 'yan. Parang ganito rin 'yun yung Trans America race. So, every time you every time you watch Apare Ranman, you think of Le Mans, okay? So ganito 'yun. It's actually well, it's more like an endurance race than a speed race. Eh. So why why um why push your why push your car's engine to the limit, di ba? So yun nga, nagpahinga muna sila. And at, at that moment, Apare felt useless. <laughs> Mechanics lang ang alam niya. Eh. Potato. <laughs> siya! Siya ang nauli ng tra- <laughs> He's trying to be useful. Come on, give him credit! Kasi, kasi lahat ng bagay dinadaan niya sa mate. Eh. Dinadaan niya sa computation. <laughs> so, doon siya somewhat, somewhat nadaig ng mga kasama niya. Okay. So, Kosame explained it to him. Wow! Okay. Kosame has words of wisdom for Apare. <laughs> Correct si Kosame doon, ba? The whining loudmouth, okay? His whining loudmouth sidekick has a few words of wisdom for him. Where's, uh, where, where, in, it's true, okay? There is truth to what he said to Apare in that episode. Okay, so, na realize the Apare na, well, I too have my limits, and and I think he's glad that he has he has friends like Al, Jan, Janyan, Kosame, Hototo. He was very loyal to him. He was very loyal to him. Who who understands his drive? Who understands his drive and creativity? Right. And we found out. Well, <clears throat> we've also found out in this episode na. Uh, Napatay pala ang nanay ni Kosame. Okay. Kosame's mother got killed by protecting him. Okay. He and she and she she met her untimely demise by protecting him. Kasi meron yata siyang I don't know, the story is a little the backstory is a little vague pero it's in a dream sequence kasi. So, yun lang na panaginipan ni ni Kosame. And well, finally call up to to Gil hinarang hinarang siya hinarang siya ng mga to at yun lumabas ang totoo he is not Gil the Butcher he is not Gil the Butcher but one half of the bad brothers okay <clears throat> kaya pala kaya pala nag post sila as Gil the Butcher para, para na makapasok sa race okay so they're not thugs. They're bossers. They're the worst kind. Okay? They are the worst kind. So, bilang gante. Dinis sa sembo niya ko kasi punta ka ng bilis. Ang dugas din pala ni Apare. Dinis sa sembo ni Apare ang kotse nila without them even knowing. Because all the smack talk, because they they exchanged smack talk with the other, um, with the with uh with the rest of with the rest of Apare's uh, circle of friends. Sempre exchange of exchange of smack talk. Okay. Oh, while this was going on, he was disassembling. Apare was disassembling the vehicle. So nalam, so nalaman na nila. Oh, dismantle na vehicle nila. Dismantle na ko si nila. So it'll take them eight hours to to get it all back together to 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 completely reassemble the vehicle. <laughs> this this was Apare's way of getting back at them. All right, humiliating. <laughs> Napaka humiliating. Okay, so they were on their way to the next stage, and somewhat. Well, let me get back to um. Uh, Ototo's plan of revenge. Sinab, sinabi na siya ni Kosame, tigilan mo na yan. Revenge doesn't get anything back. Pero, sinabi naman ni Ototo na, uh, essentially, you have, Kosame has no idea what he's talking about. We've seen it in the dream sequence, okay? Na, Kosame has lost a loved one because of 
this. Kaya, kaya pinayuan niya si, si Hototo ng ganun. Kasi may nalalaman din siya. Pero, Hototo being the hardhead, hindi niya pinaniwalaan si Kosame. So the, so, the episode ended with, wow, uh, another potential problem in Apare's life. Okay? I think that was the real guild the butcher yung lalabas dito in the next episode. Kasi yun yung tato niya. Nandito sa bato. Yun yung nakitang tato ni, yun yung nakitang tato ni Hototo sa pumatay sa father niya. Yung pumatay sa, pumatay sa tatay niya. Nandito yun. Yung tatong yun. So, probably that was the, probably that was the real guild the butcher. Wow! It's a, it's a very exciting episode, okay? A lot of comic relief. Dalaw, remind, reminder, Dalawa na silang hototo dun. <laughs> yung tao at saka yung prairie dog. I don't know. I don't know why Kosami named it Hototo. Named that prairie dog with a mohawk. And additional comic relief. And um, on the part of both Kosami and Apare. Okay. Apare was actually trying to be useful. So he had, he had a lot of blunders. He had a lot of blunders in this episode. Because he felt useless. It usually ended up it ended up in the in the episode's comic relief. So yeah, and wow. Okay. Does Apari know how to get even? <laughs> like, uh, like, um, this episode half of this episode made me laugh made me made me laugh my ass off. Okay, I gotta admit that. And well, a little tension. Okay, and the uh, the bad brothers finally got exposed. They are not Gil the Butcher. It's not them. Pero in the final scene, parang lumabas na siya. Lalantad na siya. Well, finally we might we might know now who the real Gil Gil the Butcher is. So will will Hototo have his revenge? We don't know. We'll just have to wait for the next episode, right? So, Abariranman episode seven. Two thumbs up! It's a really, a really cool episode, okay? It's a really cool episode, and wow! It, um, I almost, I almost forgot. G um, Dylan and TJ went, went their, went their own way. I say, nakahanas sila no way, but they are still neck and neck with each other, and each other's throats. Aba na sa kochi sila. It's, it's a really funny moment. It's a really funny moment. <clears throat> so we'll, uh, we'll let's wait for the next episode, shall we? So again, Aparirman episode seven, two thumbs up. A good mix of it's a good mix of um, drama and comedy. Okay, this epi this particular episode, Aparirman never fails to um, never fails to deliver the goods when it comes to. Uh, when it comes to plot twists, okay? may mga plot twist, may mga plot twist din sa episode dito na ni reveal. So that's why I gave it the two thumbs up. So let's have, let's wait for the next episode. Super Hexeros episode seven. Wow. <laughs> All right. It made me cry of laughter. Oh my god! Okay, so ganito story nyan. Nakole. Two members of the of the Tokyo branch have been introduced. Okay, sila ang nagbos ng episode. All right. So the way I see it, they they are more liberal. Okay, they are more open-minded to well, H energy. What H energy can do than than the side of a branch Hexeros. Okay. They're more lib mas, mas liberated sila. They're a more liberated bunch, uh, the way I see it. Kasi, they also responded to the call of, to, to a Kisechu, to a call of a uh, Kisechu manifestation. It was, in a, it was in an old radio station, which is on the border of Tokyo and Saitama. So, both branches responded. Pero ang pinadala na ng Tokyo branch, itong dalawang ito. Si Moina, at si Shiko. Okay? Shiko yung silver-haired. 
Chico has her zero gear as an eye patch. Cool, no? Ang cool. Okay, ang cool ng, cool ng get up ng babaeng to. Si Moy na naman, ang zero gear niya, hair clip. Nandito, naka, nakaipit sa isang ponytail niya. Wow, okay. These, uh, these super hexeros uh, well, have strange fashion sense actually. Okay, the way the way they the way they wear their zero gear, eh, unique sila, eh. yeah, individually. So <clears throat> this particular kisicho has uh, well a very scary weapon, as a scary as one scary ability. That's a Blair Witch moment. It uses your innermost sexual dreams as a way of destroying you. <laughs> Patutulugin ka at yun ang mapapang yun ang yun ang mapapanaginipan mo hanggang sa well until you eventually give out alright and Joe was the first one to to what you call this to to counter to counter this weapon nagising siya kagad and lo and behold nakita niya defeated na ng dalawang ito yung taga site taga Tokyo branch yung kakampi nila na kay Seicho dinukot din nila they were about to kill this they were about to kill her nakiyan lang si Enjo so Chico challenged Enjo to a zero game whoever feels it loses the first one to feel it loses okay? ang, sin- ang unang bumigay sa kanyang sexual desires talo <laughs> weird okay, it went it went weird from 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 that point on okay chacha has had enough watching watching enjo um about to lose so nakialam siya she bites enjo here and all of a sudden ooh <laughs> puta beast mode <laughs> May tinatago pa ng kademonyo at si Enjo! Enjo becomes a completely different hero. Okay. It's called Hexeros Beast Mode. Okay. He is totally, he is totally being run by his own H energy. He, de- he defeats Shiko. Wala. Wala nagawa. Wala nagawa si Shiko. And for the first time, Shiko feels that. Kasi it's been a long time since... Wow. Okay, kasi that zero gear is part of her treatment. Kung maga, meron siyang sakit, uh, meron siyang condition na hypersensitive lahat ng parts ng body niya. I, I think there is, there is a real condition like that eh. Wherein a mere touch can send, can send the patient into orgasm. I think there is a, I believe there is a condition like that eh. And uh, this episode shows it. And this episode shows it. So, kung maga, as part of her treatment, may zero gear siya which she wears it in the form of an eye patch. So, yun ang pumipigil sa excessive H energy niya, which, all, which she also uses para sabi, to take out Kiseichu. But, in, but at the same time, it makes her insensitive to sexual advances. So, she was wearing her zero gear nung, nung natalo siya ni Enjo. So, wow! <laughs> Moina and Shiko didn't do, didn't finish the job. So, na-revive yung Kiseichu, nakalaban. But luckily, the other four, sila, sila Hoshino, nakil, they were able to, they were able to neutralize this, uh, this Kiseichu. Napatay nila. In a, in a big way. <laughs> oh! Durog! Napatay nila in a big way. Slam bang! Okay? Super Hexeros style. So, they were able to meet these two Hexeros from the, from the Tokyo branch. Uh, yun, pina... Magkakilala pala sila, si Momochi at si, ano? Si, uh, si, si Momosono at si Moina. They come, they come from the same middle school, pero nag, nag-transfer si Moina to a more pri- to a private high school. So, kaya wali sila nang das ayun nagka nakita sila uli para silang para silang hexeros sagyan tigaga sa dibdib actually the episode ended with um Chico making a vow that no matter what she will get her prey and she was referring to Enjo 
Or rival ni rival ni Enzo to. Nakatikim. <laughs> Mukhang ito magiging main rival niya si Chico. Now I don't know si if she will also be uh, a rival to Hosino for Angel's Affections. Now, that I want to see. <laughs> That's the one I want to see. But overall, this is this is a really good episode. Na introduce na yung dalawang yung dalawang hexeros ng Tokyo, ng Tokyo branch. Okay, good thing. And trust me, these oh <laughs> these are more liberal than the Saitama branch hexeros. Okay, the one we're the ones we are used to. These are this this is a more liberal bunch. So wow. <laughs> Kahit pala sa loob ng organization ng Hexeros may tawag daw merong what should I say professional jealousy parang ganoon. Kasi the site ng Hexeros were they were the ones who took out that ano, that Kisetsu nest eh. So mainit din. Mainit din umiiral. Okay, there's there's professional jealousy going around. Okay? Tokyo branch was the one was was the first to show that. So, Super Hexeros episode 7, two thumbs up. Again, it's a good mix of uh, action and comedy and suggestiveness. <laughs> the Super Hexeros brand of suggestiveness. So, yeah. Hey, I'm totally satisfied with this episode. So, Ganun pa rin, yung, yung intensity ng Super Hexeros nandun pa rin. So, that's why they deserve the two thumbs up again this week. I can't wait for the next episode. Okay? I hope, um, I hope we get to meet the other members of the, of the Tokyo, of the Tokyo Hexeros. So, it'll be very interesting kasi, um, the way Angel's uncle reported na meron silang kasamang Kiseichu na parang doom effect doom effect sa kanila, Tokyo Branch didn't take it lightly. Okay, so, now we know. Okay? They have, um, what's it called this? They have no, um, they have no sense of, they have no sense of good and evil when it comes to Kiseichu. Kiseichu, Kiseichu need to be killed. You know, I think that's the overall, I think that is the overall mindset of the Tokyo branch. Okay? And they showed it in this episode. They absolutely showed it in this episode. So again, Super Hexeros episode 7. Two thumbs up. Can't wait for the next episode. As I said, grabe ang acupuncture skills ng matandang to. <laughs> so, well, I think he, um, he did, he, he is mentoring, he mentoring Mori has begun. And, you remember the announcer, si Sim, si Mr. Sim? Um, he's actually blind. Okay? He's actually blind. So, nag-usap sila ni Mira, and we found out that the reason why he's blind is Mira's sword fighting technique. The moonlight sword. Yun na nagpabulag sa kanya. So, he was a fighter before. Yun ang nag-end sa career niya. That sword technique. And he believes na hindi pa nilalabas ni Mira yung full potential ng moonlight sword. Si Daiwi, kinusok niyo ulit si Park Mujin. So, dun niya nalaman na may may organ there is an organization that is out to that is out not only to stop the tournament but to well but to claim it probably claim it as its own yung nga nox ang tawag we are na sa ni Park Mujin that there that, that, that any uh, any any comp any, any competing team in the national tournament may be a member of nox okay medyo binago nila kasi yung rules Dati, singles tournament ang nationals. They made it a team tournament na. So, through a, um, uh, sort of a battle for third, nakapasok si Mira. 
So, silang tatlong magbabargada na naman ang magkakasama. So, they will represent the city of Seoul in the Nationals. So, masaya si Mori kasi magkakasama sila eh. So, they're, they'll be out to represent Seoul. Okay. Nag-move na nga yung dalawa si Tayo tsaka si, si Mira sa apartment ni, ni Mori on the advice of the, organize, of the organizing committee. So, magkakasama sila ngayon sa isang tirahan. Then, a member of Knox, okay, uh, has, has, made his, had made, has made his move. Ito, pinatay! Tinumba pala yun! Ito, tinumba rin yung isang commission yun. <laughs> Holy shit! He assassinates Sim, the announcer, and one of the commissioners. Dalawa ang itinumba niya within the same day. So, the organizing committee first got wind of Sim's death. Uh, oh, nagugulat si, nag, actually nagugulat sila. What? Namatay si Sim? Tapos then, ayun, may there'll there'll be another death na malala, na na mababalitaan nila. One of their own. It is starting to thicken. Okay? Now, who <clears throat> the only fight scene here is the battle for third between Mira and some some dude who knows Taekwondo. Dal-dal mo kasi! O yan! Ang dal-dal! Dal-dalero kasi! O yan, sige! Anyway, but he's not... He's not like... Um, he's not like... Uh, he's not like Mori, okay? It's like one of those more pathetic, okay? Kaya siya natalo kagad. He's like this. Dinadaan muna sa daldal. Ayun, kaya tinalo siya ni Mita. So, wow, okay? For a terrorist organization okay, to to work its way into a to, into a tournament, to a fighting tournament, okay? That is freaking scary. It scares the shit out of me. It can scare the shit out of anybody. Lalo kung yung mga walang amuang-muang na kasali. That'll scare the shit out of them. So, so far, only, um, only, only Mori, Mira, Daiwi, and the organizing committee know. And the six know that Nox has already made their move. It's already making their move pala. So we're going to, we're going to have more exciting episodes than this one. <laughs> okay? It's an aftermath episode but the build up wow, okay? Scene by scene they are building it up to the next few episodes. I believe it's going to be um it's going to be a different arc now. It's going to be a different arc. Uh, I don't know I've, I I haven't read them. I haven't read the manhwa. So I have no idea but for me um the way I've been watching anime for so long, so I know when an I know when an when an arc is um, when an arc will be starting. So I got a good feeling that this will be the start of a of an entirely new arc of this uh, in this anime. So I am so excited. Okay, I am so excited. So it'll be the first time I'm going to wait and uh, the first be the first time I'm going to give a high rating on an Aftermath episode. God of High School episode 10, two thumbs up. The build up, the setup for the next arc is here. It's uh, it's undeniable. There will be a new arc. Okay. You got two more, uh, I think you got two more rivals being to be introduced here. At least two. Na talagang, I think masasabi nila, either nila Mori or ni Daiwi or ni Mira na talagang Rival nila. Alright. But, oh, I forgot to mention. Um, Mira is slowly developing an inferiority complex. Kasi, Daiwi tsaka si Mori. We all, we, all, we all know how strong these two are. <laughs> we all know how strong these two are. Okay? And she feels that, um, uh, she feels, she feels, uh, like she's just, Excess baggage. 
uh, pabigat. Pabigat lang siya sa dalawa. Uh, she shouldn't think that way. Okay? She has her own technique. Every person has has their own strengths and weaknesses. Okay? Comparing one, comparing yourself to another is a big no-no in life. All right? This is the lesson you're going to learn from that from this episode of God of High School. That's why I gave it a thumbs up. It's the number one reason why I gave it this. All right? So, let's wait for the next episode, shall we? Good. Decadence episode 6. What can I say? Decadence screwed us all again. <laughs> Lose the shades. Putang angas. Ang angas. Hey, after uh, we saw that Kaburagi died in the last episode, nope. He he didn't get terminated. Okay. Technical term. He only got disabled. Tapos, he was about to be executed for real. Okay, sa totoong mundo na nila. He was about to get executed for real. Then all of a sudden, uh, something from the higher ops ordered the, his executioner to stop. Instead, hinulog siya doon sa parang butas leading to the correctional facility for bugs. Okay. So, he's just been declared as a bug himself. Right? Pero boy pa, he's still alive. Now, in this correctional facility, wow. They inject a, uh, a different mix of Oxy-1 into their, into the, um, uh, what you call this? Into the prisoner's body, na, which makes them sick to the point of vomiting. Okay? Wow. And, Conditions are wow. I say if if that were if that were if that were real, it's absolutely appalling. Okay, ang isa lang ang task na ginaga na pinagagawa sa kanila as a, a part of the part of hard labor. Okay. Dito pa siya <laughs> lahat ng uh, lahat ng tae ng gadol lilinisin nila at ihulo nila para sa isang malaking butas na sa malaking balon na ganun na mayroon mga rotating all this uh, para may mga nagro-rotate na spikes na ganun and we all know how how offensive the smell of gadol feces is okay you don't ask you, you, you don't believe me? Ask Natsume. Masakot pa sa penitentiary ko Now, I figured... Di ba ang, di ba ang gadol? Character lang. Uh, yun ang... Nasa game lang yun. Bakit? Bakit ito? Bakit ito etching nila? So, as... As the episode went on, we... Well... We finally found out that gadol are real. Okay? Totoo ang gadol. Now, but gadol means in, in the real world, it's a sort of a uh, corporation that produces these monsters and incorporates, the, and incorporates them into the game. Wow. And it's run by humans. Humans didn't go totally extinct. Umaga. There are some, there are some living humans. And they're running this company called Gadol. So they're the ones making this Gadol in the game. No. Wow! Ano to? Ano to? Kabo decides to um, get in contact with Natsumi again. Kasi nalam, may nasagap sa balita na there, there is a group of cyborgs in that correctional facility who is, um, who is running... Uh, was found a way to log in to log back into the game kasi pag bug ka na, kasi pag bug ka you're treated as a prisoner na, so you're not entitled to that na you're not entitled to that well that basic cyborg right all right that's that's just that's just my word okay 
that that basic cyborg right to log into the game of decadence so he proves himself to a leader who who he knows very well who is a part of his team long ago was a part of this part was a part of this team long ago so nagkita sila uli and he said sabi niya you got to prove yourself you have to beat me in the game called death dive wow okay it's getting creepier <laughs> it's getting creepier so eto na death dive time na so naglaban sila with only a shovel in hand you know allowed no weapon kabu finds a way to win nabunot niya yung yung fin dito ni ni Donatello yun ang name ng giant na cyborg na dati niyang kaibigan nabunot niya rito as a sign of victory actually it's also a sign of humiliation because you took something you took you took a part of us you took a cyborg's part out eh. so that's a sign of humiliation he humiliated Donatello with that so in retaliation Donatello uh, drags him into the pool sabay silang nahulog dun sa parang pool of uh, of gadol feces na liquefied na oh so you not to well all of a sudden Kabu shoots out with it with Donatello in tow meron pala siya working pala yung jetpack niya so that he used that to escape then he's able to save uh, Donatello ito yung isang kasama ni Donatello papatayin siya so Donatello saves him Donatello saves him naman so he just returned the favor and granted this request na to to get himself to get himself back into the game all for not so me okay, so winarni nga siya ni, ni Jill yung pinaka caretaker ng secret facility nila doon Jill warned him that he can't use his he can't use his old account anymore so that means he's going to enter the he's going to enter the game as a new character right so steps onto this pod this sort of a pod right steps onto the pod and instantly logs in may lumabas sa screen decadence new game continue he chose new game so that means he's now an entirely new character right which makes it exciting okay the rebirth of Kaburagi oh wow okay this episode got creepy midway <laughs> he also gains a friend uh, his name is Sarkozy who was was more funny than creepy he tells he tries to scare Kaburagi with this with this uh, with this scary story a la a la Sebastian Krall or Dr. Dastardly of TikTok <laughs> He's trying to he's trying to be that but that but Kaburagi doesn't buy it. <laughs> Kaburagi isn't scared at all. <laughs> what the hell? Ano ba gawa sa tae? A lot of twists. There's a there's a comic relief. Uh, a sprinkle of comic relief through Sarkozy, and he beats an uh, well an old ally, right? Who was who was an axe who had an axe to grind against him in the uh, for for starters. Eventually redeems himself. Eventually, uh, Kabura, Kaburagi eventually redeems himself. So it's a wild episode. It's a really wild episode because he is into his first month as a bug. In that, in that uh, correctional facility, sa kapii tang yun, right? Wow. It's cyborgs were human. It's to have to have someone clear clear out clear out a a weird kind of feces, a weird kind of shit. <laughs> that's appalling. Okay, that's against basic. That's against basic rights. Okay. Human or cyborg? Wow, okay. I, I just can't because of this. I can't wait for the next episode. Decadence episode six, two thumbs up. Right? This is a um, 
it's a wild transition episode right it's a wild transition it's a wild transition episode and um uh the higher ups wanted to make kaburagi suffer for what he did right because wow he was pinatawa na siya ng death penalty noon but i think i don't i don't like to say na naawa ang higher ups but I think they, I think they want to. I think they enjoy seeing him suffer. All right, they enjoy seeing him suffer. They enjoy <clears throat> seeing him suffer for the, for for cyborgs. They they enjoy this. They really enjoy this. So <clears throat> so Kaburagi's determination was just uh, was just his fuel for this for this uh, for this entire month. In the episode, okay. it, you know, it, it somewhat blew my mind because, wow, even cyborgs are, um, even cyborgs are subjected to this kind of punishment, to this kind of, uh, to this kind of mental and mental and physical punishment. Wala nga masakol pa sa ano to, masakol pa sa gulag system ng ng the Soviet Union to nung araw. Uh, this episode also showed us how. Um, evolved emotionally and mentally the cyborgs are and it also shows that god the gadol are real okay? they're not just they're not just um they're not just targets in a video game they are real and they're being produced by a corporation called gadol Ucha, what these are the some of the weirdest twists in an anime okay these are some of the weirdest Twists I have, I have ever seen. Okay. Decadence screwed us all again in this ep- with this episode alone, with this episode alone. So I gave it a two thumbs up. All right. Studio Nut is wow. Okay. It is their it, it is their pilot it's their pilot project. Okay? And they are well, it's obvious they are telling everybody that this is. Their pet project, not just their pilot one, but their pet project. I hope. Uh, well, Decadence is, I think, slated for slated for 12 episodes, 12 episodes only. So we're halfway through now. Episode six na to eh. So next next week it's episode seven. Na. It's the second half of it's the second half of the entire show. So I can't wait. I can't wait what Kaburagi will look like this time. Kasi bagong ka- considered na bagong character na siya sa game. Pagpasok niya, pagbalik niya. So, what will he look like? Will not so may instantly recognize him even though he's using another, even though he's a new avatar now. Okay. Will not so may recognize him right away. And, holy shit, okay. Humans still exist in the real world. And they are producing, and the gadol are for real. If, if you don't consider this a uh, an astounding an astounding twist in the storyline, I don't know what will. <laughs> to me, it's an astounding twist. Okay, like I said, like I've said twice before in this review, Decadence has screwed us all again with this episode, and it is fun. Right? So I repeat, Decadence episode six, two thumbs up. Oh, we're done with the first half of the first half of this anime. I can't wait for the second half. I can't wait for the next episode. Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 10. First and foremost, welcome back, guys. (laughs) 
I'm quite ecstatic when this anime came back after its second hiatus. Okay, take note. Second hiatus. All right. But, um, for me, it had a, um, let's call this, a uh, somewhat predictable ending. All right. First, okay, uh, the gang, uh, si Yuga, Luke, at saka, I forgot the I forgot the name of that guy, the tall uh, the tall kid. Okay, they were given VIP tickets to Robin's Robin's band's next concert. Okay, now nalatin nalaman natin dito na hindi pa nanya kapatid si Roa. Okay, pinsan. Okay. Pagkaloko pala tung tung Roa ng ito eh. Yes, well, because everyone everyone in the Yu-Gi-Oh fandom believe that they are siblings. Nope. <laughs> okay. This episode, uh, what you call this? Discounted that myth. Magpinsan sila. Pero may pagka, well, may pagka tarantado pala itong si Roa. Okay. He has planned this uh, three-on-three duel from the start. Okay. <clears throat> he, uh, he... Uh, had Roman uh, suggest ghost stories to to Luke while he while he some while he catch it while he while he's asleep sometimes. Now this is the only this is only part of his grand plan. Now I don't know what the, the we don't know what the other parts of his grand plan is. Okay, I think it will slowly be revealed in the next few episodes. Okay, so all he wants is to duel these three, si Yuga. Si Gakoto, okay, the tall kids. Si Gakoto at si Luke, silang tatlo. All he wants to do is duel the three. And I think, okay, based on the ending, he wants to duel Yuga. Siyempre, the, the inventor of the rush duel format. Okay. He wants a piece of him. Para masabi rin na siya ang king of duel. Siya ang duel king. Kasi sikat silang bande. So, <clears throat> if, he beats, if he beats Yuga, well, Sisikat sila ng todo. Now, Roman is an unwilling pawn. Okay? So, one, uh, during the course of the story, may, may nag-creep out kay Luke. Okay? Luke is probably one of the most vain characters in this franchise. I have never seen a character so vain than, more vain than him. Okay? Nope. Manjome was the closest. Okay? Nope. The only character closest to him is Manjome of GX. Okay? Yun lang ang closest sa kanya. None is more vain than Luke. Okay? Ito yung nagpapa... Pero, huwag nyo. Siya ang nagpapa spicy. He is the spice in this show. Okay? He's also the comic reading. Alright? He's the main comic reading. So, <clears throat> yung pala, yung... Yung nananakot kay Luke dito, bangista nila. It's it's the band's bassist. Si... Even I forgot his name. <laughs> Omaino Ushiro. Alright? Remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> Even I forgot his name. Okay? The fans, the fans here don't know his name. Only the translation. Which... Uh, his name translates to Behind You. <laughs> pati pati pa nga pati pa nga lang may pagka creepy eh. but anyway he duels Luke okay first um first several turns of the match uh, of the duel pala sorry the thing that hides in the purple mirror that's its name tangin ang yan ang trap the majority of the duel siya ang Lamang siya. Okay. First turn pa lang ng duel, dinamage na niya ang life points ni, ni Luke. Okay. First turn pa lang, may binurn damage na siya. Okay. Now, <clears throat> ito lamang si Luke, natataranta tuwing sinisigaw ni Omaino Ushiro. Alright? Sino ba yun? I forgot. I mean, but... So as soon as this review goes by, I'm going. Uh, I might remember his name. 
tinatakot siya by shouting behind you in Japanese. Okay? So, natataranta siya. <clears throat> so, then, oof, light bulb moment for Luke. Ah, okay, the reason why. So, kaya pala yun na sinisigaw mo sa akin. Dahil yun ang pangalan mo. <laughs> <laughs> He's that dense. <laughs> How dense can you be? Okay. Sabi ko sa inyo, Luke is, prob- is the most vain character ever created for this franchise. Ganong ka-dense. Alright? Matatawa ka talaga sa, sa pagiging dense ng character na to eh. But, okay. He realized it before it's too late. Okay? Nag- nagising. Okay. Back to the duel. Yun na. Sunod-sunod na yung combo niya. Until, boom! OTK City for his opponent. <laughs> it's OTK City. Okay? Now, we duelists uh, have a term called OTK. Okay? OTK means one turn kill. Okay? It means you were able to max to max out your opponent's life points in just one turn. Whether it be yours or your opponent's. Okay? Basta na max out mo lahat ng life points niya habang buo pa yung life points na kunyari dito sa anime is 4,000. But in but in the actual card game it's 8,000. Pag naubos mo lahat yun it's an OTK. So, dito, nangyari. OTK City for the opponent again. Talagang, well, despite his, despite his uh, being self-serving, being dense, and most of all, being, uh, being vain, <laughs> no one can, no one can outmatch him in the OTK department. Okay? Not even Yuga. As, uh, if you've seen episode 2, he beats Yuga. Okay? Lamang na rin si Yuga nun. But, he draws one, uh, one of his turns, he draws, draws five, boom, he beats Yuga. Ganon din dito. Alright? So, <clears throat> but, he, being a good sport, okay? He, well, being a good sport, being a member of Team Sevens, okay? He, congratulate din niya si ano? Forgot his name again. <laughs> Omaino Ushiro. Right. I forgot his name again. Kinongratulate pa rin niya. Nice, uh, niya. nice duel. Okay. Natuwa naman yung alaban. Kasi, eh, he felt appreciated. I think for the first time, he, he felt appreciation for, 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 what, he, for what he did. Okay. Or I think for the, yeah, for the first time, he felt, he felt appreciated. So, eating aso. Okay. He had a smile from ear to ear when, he, when Luke did that. So, happy ending? Nope, hindi pa tapos kasi 3 on 3 nga eh. Now, tinisor ang next episode, it will be Gakoto versus Romin. Now, what's disappointing here is because it's 3 on 3. I now have an inkling who's going to win that duel in the next episode. Pero hindi ko sasabihin sa inyo. I, I don't want to spoil it. I do not want to spoil it and I don't even have a clue of what the next episode will look like. Okay? Pero, uh, bilang Yu-Gi-Oh! fan, bilang fan ng franchise na to, since, well, since uh, GX Season 2, uh, uh, yeah, GX Season 1, since GX Season 1, excuse me, I've been a fan of the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise since GX Season 1. Okay? <clears throat> I now sort of had that, um, Call this uh, fans instinct. Where's my name? Okay. Ooh. I'm getting heated about this episode. Fans instinct as to how how the next duel will turn out. Okay. Remember, so first part ng episode binigyan binigyan ni Yuga si Romi ng isang modified guitar. Okay. That a guitar that was used in the previous episode parang naging generator para doon sa sa ilo na napagkaman ng monster yun he modified that guitar to turn into a dual disc kasi may ibubuga pala sa dueling si ano eh si Romin so he he realized that uh, she should have her own dual disc so 
<clears throat> minodify niya yung gitara, yung guitar na nagusto ni Romin, turn it into a dual disc. So, it can be turned into a dual disc when needed. So, more like, so nakita sa t-shirt, yun nga gagamitin yung dual disc against Gakuto. When it comes to uh, duels like this, if you're a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh, you may have an inkling of what of who will win next in the next uh, in the next episode. Okay? You'll have an inkling of what who's going to win in the next episode. So yeah, but I'm not good, but I'm I'm not gonna tell you, mga lifestyle. I am not going to tell you. Okay? Sa akin na muna yon. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens episode ten. Thumbs up lang muna. Alright? I was supposed to give it a, um, this, but, it's a comeback episode. And, um, Sevens came back in a modest way, continuing where they left off. Okay? They didn't actually, uh, came back with a bang. Which they usually do. Okay? Which they usually do. Um, outside, Zexal, alright? When Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal came back for its second season yun, maganda yung naging, uh, maganda yung naging start. Okay. Yuma had to, Yuma had to do it alone without Astral. So, first time niya ginawa yun, so, that's a, uh, out of the norm. Pero, this, um, the ending was a bit, um, expected. And the potential winner of the next episode is, uh, well, medyo nagets ko na. Yun lang ang ano eh. Yun lang ang, uh, that was the only reason I gave it the thumbs up. The, um, the creepy duel. <laughs> okay? Tell you honestly, I have never watched a duel as creepy as that. Alright? Although the, um, the, the legend of the purple mirror is true. Okay, meron talagang urban legend na ganun sa Japan. Right? There is such a legend. What impressed me with this duel is they turned that urban legend into a monster card. Okay? So, well, if you ask me, I would love to see that as an actual card. Yung... The thing that hides in the purple mirror. That's its name. The purple mirror monster card. I would love to see that as an... Uh, as an uh, as an actual card, uh, I would love to see Konami release that as a real card, as an as an official card. Now I don't care if it's Rush Dual Print or OCG Print. Okay, Rush Dual Print okay lang collection, <laughs> collection. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh Sevens Episode Ten, thumbs up. Welcome back, Yu-Gi-Oh Sevens. I hope, I hope you stay. I hope you don't don't go into another hiatus. Okay. The fans are hungry. Yu-Gi-Oh fans all over the world, not just in Japan, are hungry for this uh, for this uh, series. And I heard uh, its ratings are doing well over there in Japan. Okay. Give me if uh, if my if what I say, if what I just said is correct, comment below. Okay, don't forget to comment below. I really want to know. I really want to know as a Yu-Gi-Oh fan. You just wait for the next episode, but for me. I know who's gonna win.